An impactful winter storm is about to move into the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast just before Christmas, bringing several inches of snowfall and even some very dangerous freezing rain. A lot of people are going to be traveling, so this is obviously a very big concern. Also, the models have started to suggest that we are going to move into a colder and snowier direction as we reach towards the end of December into January, and we're going to be deep diving into the upcoming medium to long range pattern, taking a look at why I do suspect cold and snow is going to make a very quick return to our wintertime pattern. And that atmospheric river isn't going anywhere. This is going to continue to bring frequent major storms from west to east across the nation, impacting almost all of us here in the United States. So let's just look at this winter storm. And we do see snowfall moving in for Tuesday on the 23rd of December here for the mid-Atlantic and northeastern states. We can see pretty heavy snowfall there for upstate New York and even moving into New England. And we can see a mixed bag of precipitation down there for Pennsylvania, maybe even New Jersey, where we see some pinks there. That is where the model is indicating freezing rain is a potential threat there. And that's actually going to be even more impactful to travel than the snow would be. As we move a little bit later into the day, we can see freezing rain continues for parts of Pennsylvania into New Jersey. Snowfall for all of New England, as well as some of upstate New York and into northern New Jersey, even New York City there, before that storm comes to a close. Now, if you're planning on traveling on the 23rd or 24th in these areas, that is going to be extremely impactful. Looking at the GFS model, it actually paints a more major image here of this storm, bringing snowfall to parts of the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and then again into New York State, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, starting out on the morning of the 23rd here. We even see the freezing rain as well here for parts of the Mid-Atlantic on this model also. And then as we move towards the afternoon hours, that heavier stuff moves into New York and into New England even more. And as we take a look here at the total snowfall, we can see for the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast, there is numerous areas dealing with a plowable snowfall event here potentially as we move just before the Christmas time frame. Looking at two to six inches for a lot of the blue areas. So we see some of the Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. For the Mid-Atlantic side of things, it is going to be a little bit more elevation based as we're not dealing with the coldest temperatures possible during this time frame. But for areas in the Great Lakes and Northeast, there's a greater chance that whether you're on a hill or you're in a valley, you are dealing with snowfall to some extent within this storm system. And for the higher elevation areas, we can even see six to 10 inches here for some of the Adirondacks, Green Mountains, White Mountains, and even into parts of Maine. So a pretty significant snow system just before Christmas. And again, a lot of you will be traveling on the 23rd and 24th. This could be extremely impactful. And looking at the freezing rain, uh, we do see some of this taking place throughout parts of southeastern Michigan, even Detroit there. We see some of Ohio here, very close to Cleveland, just south of Cleveland. And then a lot of Pennsylvania, especially in the middle of the state there, dealing with some freezing rain. And then as we move southward from there, we do see throughout the mountainous areas of eastern West Virginia, as well as western Virginia, we do see some freezing rain taking place in these areas as well, just before Christmas time. Super, super impactful storm, potentially about to be on our doorstep. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of this first things first. Now, I did want to take a little bit of a deep dive into the upcoming pattern and I noticed something interesting today. This is actually December of 2024. This is actually November 23rd. I'm just going to let this play out. I want to I want you to see what ended up happening. We saw cold air move in for the beginning of December and then by the time we reached Kind of past the halfway mark of December, we did see warmer temperatures set up in the east. When we look at the first half of December this year, so this is for 2025, it looks extremely similar. We're dealing with colder temperatures overall in the east. We can clearly tell there's just been an Arctic train just constantly sending cold air here down into the east. As we take a look at what is upcoming, this is the 24th through the 29th, we can see it's very similar to how 2024 went. The reason why this is significant is because I've seen a lot of people panicking, you know, winter's over. That's very standard. Last winter was an extremely cold winter and we did see a warm up actually around the same time frame. But we do have long range teleconnections really, really suggesting that we are going to be moving into a colder and snowier direction here as we reach the very end of December into January. And I wanted to present that to you guys today. Uh, now, the first thing that we're looking at here is the ENSO, which is your El Nino, La Nina 
uh, we are currently in a weak La Nina. So that has been the dominant pattern that we've been dealing with. And frequently we see clipper systems moving through the north central states, which we've seen a lot of. Uh, we also see a little bit less activity heading in through the southwest and deeper south. And that's also been true so far. So it's been a very La Nina dominant pattern here that we've been overall dealing with. As you can see, as time goes on, start to elevate closer and closer and closer to a neutral ENSO, which is in between these dashed areas. This is a overall much more favorable ENSO phase for the winter time. And we do look to elevate towards that, especially as we head towards January and even into February and March. Now, another thing is for the more medium to long term here, as we look more towards the end of December into January, we do see our AO. We are in a positive Arctic oscillation, which basically just means there's warmer or colder air better yet set up over the Arctic. And it's not allowing a lot of that Arctic air to escape. We can see that overall, as the days go on, which the dates are at the bottom, by the way, we do see this overall descending uh, to where we're at a neutral or even negative AO. And this is going to overall cause things to become more favorable. We really reach towards a negative AO here as we reach the 26th, 27th, 28th. And the long term trend is that we will remain somewhere near neutral favoring negative as we head towards the early portion of January. What this does is it's going to cause warmer air to set up over the Arctic and that allows for these troughs to escape all over the northern hemisphere and it's allowing Arctic air to move much further to the south. Now another factor that's really going to aid us is the NAO which stands for North Atlantic Oscillation. This one is strongly positive right now which causes colder temperatures over Greenland and Iceland and the rest of that northern North Atlantic area it really elongates our troughs, especially when combined with a negative AO. We don't get these deep, narrow troughs into the eastern states. We've more so see an elongated one that more so impacts the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, and northeast as well, southeastern Canada, and then again into that Greenland and Iceland area. We really want this to be negative because that's what's going to send the cold way down into the United States where we see the deep south impact in mid-Atlantic, and we start to get a lot more snow chances this way as well. Now again, so now we're aware of the temperature pattern overall. I want to show you what the jet stream is doing because we still have this thing racing in through the northwest, this atmospheric river that's going to be just carrying storms across the nation. And it does slow down eventually, especially after Christmas time frame where we get this major trough set up around the 28th, 29th. 30th now being suggested on the models, which again is right around when that AO and NAO reach their favorable phases. So we actually see it taking place and actually causing impacts to our weather directly. So this is a great example. It's a quick moving trough, but we do see it and we still end up with a ridge overall for the Western and central areas with a trough more descending into the East, even as we head towards early January here. The other factor, uh, when we look at these, um, geopotential heights is this this major major trough we can really see the positive uh or negative nao right here with these mostly red colors near again greenland iceland and some areas in northeastern canada here this is what allows for this trough to deep dive into the eastern states and we do expect frequent low pressure systems to move across the nation very strong ones as well this is your uh basically your pressure anomalies. So we're seeing above or below average pressure. The blues and greens gonna be lower pressure than normal and oranges and reds will be above normal pressure. And we can see a lot of blues and greens moving across the nation with this jet stream. We do see some high pressure systems set up in the east, especially we slow down around the 22nd, 23rd, 24th. But then we start to see these major systems moving across again. There's one in the northeast by the 26th. There's one back there for the Rockies as well. We see that one move into the east as well by the time we're reaching the 28th, 29th. And then we even see a major one up there in Canada as well for the early January timeframe. So frequent major storms here overall for the upcoming pattern is what I'm currently seeing. Now, as we kind of move past this system, the Christmas one, which we can see on screen there on the European model, we do reach a little bit of a quieter phase in the east until after Christmas where we do get another low Moving over eastern Canada, maybe some freezing rain there for northern uh, New England for this time frame, uh, but it doesn't look to be super, super widespread for those of us in the United States. Then by the time we're reaching the 28th, we get a major low over the Great Lakes with a st strong stretching cold front there, which might elevate the severe weather risk down below for the deeper south, even all the way up into parts of the Ohio Valley and Appalachian Mountain Range here 
just after the Christmas time frame. So again, on December 28th here, and this is dragging that Arctic air down as we reach the favorable AO, favorable NAO. And as you can see, we actually end up getting a lot of lake effect snow going again for those great lakes around Monday the 29th here on this particular model run. This is a good sign that this is very, very potent Arctic air. Uh, if we're seeing lake effect snowfall, that means that obviously this cold air is significant. And as we keep going, we kind of keep the colder signal there. We do on this particular model run see a little bit less storminess during this time frame, which that's the part that can you know, change back and forth all the time. The bigger picture here that we really want to see set up is just a strong signal for a trough in the east, ridge in the west. The rest has time to work itself out. Not that it's a guarantee that it will, but that is the lesser important factor here as we're looking at the longer range. The total precipitation through this model run is still very elevated over the west as we get that very quick moving and intense jet stream moving across the west. This is going to continue to batter these areas with strong storms. And you can see that we do get uh, occasional uh, storm systems moving into the Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, bringing a pretty decent amount of precipitation up there as well. Now, I want to show you a overnight GFS model run because it did actually suggest a major uh, snowfall event for the Mid-Atlantic here, as you can see, around Monday, Tuesday, the 29th and 30th. And please take this with a grain of salt. This is very far out. But we did see this model want to show a major storm system for Northern Virginia there, Maryland, D.C., Pennsylvania, into parts of New Jersey there, even stretching further southward down the Delmarva. New York City impacted by this one, Boston, Providence, all of your southern New England areas uh, with a major snow system there. Now the 12Z GFS model run, uh, we see that Christmas one move by. I want to kind of just glance at it. We do overall see a little bit less of that trough activity being able to move into the east, which is interesting. Uh, it does finally take place around January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th, where we actually do see some signals for some east coast snow events here. For the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, just a little bit later, this is very far out. So again, the, the specifics don't matter when you're looking at beyond 240 hours out. But the overall pattern does. The overall pattern is still pointing towards a trough in the east, ridge in the west, being able to reestablish itself here. We actually do see some signals for storms moving along that. And that is a takeaway that we can use here at this point. Now, the total snowfall on both of these GFS model runs, here's the 0Z one from overnight. And we can see the Mid-Atlantic into parts of the northeast would receive a 10 inch plus snow system in this instance on this model for the late december time frame i know this says january 4th but this is just the full model run of snowfall so this would be from that major snow system that it showed overnight and then obviously it didn't show that exact one in the 12z model run which is the latest model for today but we still get a decent amount across the midwest great lakes into parts of the mid-atlantic and then especially the northeast here with multiple feet of snowfall. So these particular model runs are trending in a much snowier direction here from run to run. Uh, it is going to be interesting as these models try to navigate what's happening. I've noticed a lot of back and forth. So it seems like they're a little bit unsure of what to expect after the Christmas time frame. But I am confident that we will see an overall trend towards colder and snowier as we move towards that early January time frame, uh, just based on the facts of the climate happening around the world right now with the NAO, the AO moving into the neutral. And so uh, everything kind of points towards more opportunities down the road. So I just wanted to present that good news to you guys today. With all of that stuff being said, be sure to subscribe. We upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.